Hello, my name is Amos Peter, and you're welcome to yet another lecture in our series of uh, the lectures on computer architecture. And in today's lesson, we shall be talking about the various units or parts and uh, the registers that makes up the central processing unit. Now, generally, we know that the CPU is the single, perhaps, the single most important uh, part of the computer system, which acts as the, uh, the brain of the computer. And it is actually the part that uh, executes uh, the instructions and uh, do other information or data processing. Now, a typical look at the register. Now, a typical look at the central processing unit will uh, show you that the CPU is composed of um, uh, several parts, among which are the uh, we have the arithmetic and uh, the logic unit. We have the control unit. Um, then we also have what we refer to as uh, registers. Now, the register is basically nothing but a temporary uh, high-speed memory that is used uh, to store or hold uh, information. And actually, uh, the basic unit of uh, data storage in a register uh, in what we refer to as bits. And basically, the register is simply nothing but a collection of um, flip-flops. We already know that uh, flip-flops is a unit, uh, it's a storage medium that is capable of storing one bit of data. And uh, it is a combination of um, several flip-flops that actually forms what we call as a register. So for example, uh, this very particular register, which is composed of um, four flip-flops, can be called a four-bit uh, register. In other words, it is uh, capable of uh, holding four bits of, uh, of data. Now, in the course of this uh, lecture, we shall make an attempt to show how a typical CPU carry, carry out an addition of uh, two numbers. Uh, let's say, assuming we want to read value of uh, A from memory and then read value of B from memory, then add the values of A and B and put the result in the memory variable C. Uh, we are going to see sequentially how the CPU carry out such a uh, computation. Now, we said that the arithmetic and the logic unit of a processor uh, actually helps the processor in doing the arithmetic calculations, let's say of addition, multiplication, subtraction, and uh, division. And of course, it also carry out other logical operations that result in the yes or no, uh, true or false and um, some other logical operations, for example, compare operations, uh, branching operations such as uh, jump or go to, and so on and so forth. Now, in addition to, to the registers I mentioned earlier, which are general purpose registers. We also, the processor also has some other important register. And uh, one of such is called the instruction uh, uh, pointer. And basically what the instruction pointer does is that um, it is a register that holds the current instruction that the microprocessor is uh, executing at the moment, assuming we are carrying out um, a computational task. It is the instruction, the responsibility of the instruction register to hold of the current instruction that the processor is uh, processing. 
Then another very important uh, register is uh, what we refer to as the instruction pointer register. Uh, the instruction pointer register actually holds the address of the current instruction. The instruction pointer register holds the address of the current instruction that is located in the random uh, access memory or the main memory. Now we also have uh, some other important registers. Uh, for example, we have uh, a very important register called the program counter. And uh, usually the function of the program counter is to point at the address of the next instruction in memory that the processor will execute after it has finished executing the current instruction. So the program counter generally increases uh, by one after the execution of a single line of instruction. Now, we also have other types of register, for example, uh, called the memory beta register, whose function is to store or hold the data that has been copied from memory and stored into it. And it is the data in the memory data register that the ALU usually acts on in order to give us the results. Now, another important part of the central processing unit is the, is the control unit. And of course, the control unit, you know, acts as the traffic core, traffic core, or the overall system as the CPU manager, if you wish. And um, it acts as the coordinator which synchronizes all the various parts of the computer system in order to, uh, to achieve a seamless and smooth uh, uh, flow and coordination or movement of uh, information processing. Now, everything all comes down to the control unit. And um, the control unit, just like I said, is a state machine meaning that it is constantly checking uh, or sniffing at the data bus to see if there's any instruction that has been placed for it to uh, carry out. And in the next slide, we are going to see how uh, the CPU works and how everything fits in together in this CPU. Now, generally, uh, the central processing unit um, operates in what we refer to as the um, CPU instructions instruction cycle and uh, the first is what we refer to as the fetch cycle as the name implies the fetch cycle is that uh, part of the instruction cycle where the RAM goes to the where the CPU rather goes to the random access memory and fetches a line of code. And what the CPU actually does is that it looks at uh, the instruction pointer and sees the address of the instruction in memory, that is the random access memory. And then the CPU now goes to that very particular location memory and fetch the instruction. Now, after the CPU fetches the instruction, the next thing the CPU does is that the CPU tries to make sense of the instruction it has fetched. In other words, it tries uh, to find out uh, whether it is required to add, subtract, divide that instruction or to carry out some uh, logical comparison uh, 
and so on and so forth. Now it is after the CPU has made sense of this information, in other words, uh, decode uh, the information, then the next thing the CPU does is that the CPU executes the information. And after the CPU executes the information with the help of the arithmetic and logic unit, then the cycle is being uh, repeated because the program counter will then be increased by a value of one and then the CPU checks the next location in memory for the next available instruction that is required to carry out. Now on this slide, an attempt is made to show this CPU instruction cycle pictorially. As you can see, we start with the, uh, the fetch cycle where the CPU goes to retrieve the information from memory and then the next, the CPU attempts to decode. And when I say decode, it means the CPU checks whether it's to add, whether it's to load, whether it's to store or write, or whether it's to branch to any line of code, and so on and so forth. And after the CPU is able to decode uh, the line statement, then the CPU now executes the code. In other words, the information is solved after the information is solved, that information will be stored back to memory. And of course, the program counter is uh, incremented. And then the cycle is repeated once again. Now, we shall make an attempt to see how the CPU processes a very simple program. So here we want to add the values of uh, variables A and B, which we assumed to be in the memory, and then at the end put the result in variable C in memory. And um, so here in the assembly language balance, this is how it's been written. So we have uh, A plus B, and then a C, meaning that at the content of memory location of variable A and the content of uh, variable B, and then store the result in variable uh, C. Now, here is a piece of an assembly line uh, code that depicts how such an operation can be carried out. The first instruction here starts by saying load A into register arrow. So what the processor will do is that it will load the content of the memory location A into the register arrow. And then the next second one it loads the content of memory location B into register R3. Then the third instruction will actually perform the add operation. And then the result will be stored in the, this register R2. And then the last instruction will write the content of register R2 into memory location C or variable C. And uh, what this diagram attempts to do is to show us uh, sequentially in a simulation how a typical processor carry out this information processing. Now, basically, on the right hand side of uh, the slide, you can see this diagram shows a typical random access memory. And of course, the uh, random access memory can hold different types of data and information. For example, it can hold uh, instructions. It can hold instructions, and of course, it can hold data. And you can see that uh, this RAM with uh, memory addresses level as A, C, and B, you know, has uh, information or data written into each of these memory locations, as in two, one, and three. 
and uh, the second half of the memory is also composed of uh, the instructions and of course each of these instructions has its associated uh, memory addresses while to the left hand side shows a typical CPU with uh, the general purpose registers and the special purpose registers here we have the instruction register and the instruction pointer and of course here you have the arithmetic and logic uh, unit so we shall attempt to show in the in a simulation how this simple arithmetic addition is being carried out by the central processing unit now the first thing the cpu does is that the CPU points to, or rather the instruction pointer points to the address of the first instruction in memory. And of course, the address of the first instruction in memory is 2005. So you can see here that 2005 has been loaded to the instruction pointer. Now, once the 2005 is loaded in the instruction pointer, the next is the content of that memory address 2005 will now be loaded into the instruction register that is the IR and the moment the instruction is loaded into the instruction register what the computer does in the next uh, slide on the next simulation is to copy as you can see here copy the content of location A to register R1 and as soon as that is done the next instruction will now be executed so what happens is that the instruction pointer will now move or increment by a factor of 1 and of course that is 2006 and of course that is 2006 as you can see uh, depicted in the instruction pointer and as soon as we have that, then the content of the instruction at that very particular location will now be loaded into the instruction register. And as soon as that is done, the CPU now copies uh, the content of variable B or memory location B into register R3. And then the next, the CPU moves to the next uh, instruction. The next instruction is um, to add the content of register R1 and R3 and then store the result in register R2. So you can see that the instruction pointer has incremented to 2007 and as soon as that is done, the instruction at location memory location 2007 is being copied into IR and as soon as that is done, what the computer does is that it adds the content of uh, R1, which is 2, with the content of uh, R3, which is 3, and uh, the result is 5. And of course, the result is being stored in the uh, register R2. Now, as soon as the processor finishes the computation, the result of R2 is currently resident in the register. The next thing the a processor needs to do is to write the content of the result back to the random access uh, memory and uh, that is the variable location C and this is basically what we see in the next uh, simulation now as soon as that information is stored in C then that very particular piece of information has been uh, fully executed as required by the processor. Now, putting it all together, uh, the computer basically has many parts. Of course, the computer is made up of so many parts. Here you can see we have the CPU, we have the keyboard, the display unit in the form of uh, uh, the monitor of the visual display unit we have the ram the hard disk 
CD-ROMs and uh, etc. And of course, each of these uh, functional parts or units of the computer are being connected on what we refer to as the data bus. And of course, the data bus is responsible for carrying the information or data or data just like um, even in our day-to-day -day, uh, activities what do we make use of bus buses buses are used to, uh, to convey or transport people from one place or the other so also in computer engineering we make use of uh, buses you know that to transport uh, information or data or electrical signals if you so desire so whenever any of these devices intends to communicate with the a CPU or any other device, what it usually does is that it uh, sends its information or data and places it on the, the uh, bus, the data bus. And uh, the CPU is actually a state machine that constantly uh, sniffs or checks at the bus for any information or data that is uh, meant uh, for it. Now, Basically, the RAM is the computer's main memory and it actually acts as the location where programs and data are stored. And of course, uh, two major types of data can be stored in the uh, memory. That's the random access memory. We can have uh, the data that are supposed to be processed. And of course, we can have our instructions can also be stored in the memory. And um, it is important to note that the communication between the CPU and the RAM is duplex uh, in mode. In other words, uh, the RAM can transfer information to the CPU and the CPU can read or write information to any location on the RAM. Uh, this is that. I've already explained what the control uh, unit actually does. I said it's basically to synchronize or to harmonize all the signaling of the different uh, components of the computer system in order to achieve a smooth uh, information or data uh, processing. So basically, this is how the central processing unit executes information processing. Uh, what does the processor do? The processor simply looks at where the instruction pointer is pointing, reads uh, instruction from there, uh, from the RAM, and then executes it. Uh, and then executes it. And uh, basically, for the CPU to execute an instruction, the control unit uh, makes use of the arithmetic and logic unit uh, together with the memory and or any of the registers depending on the, what it is uh, expected to do uh, so in a nutshell this is basically how uh, the cpu carry out a simple information processing of addition we have seen how the CPU actually pulls or requests information from the random access memory onto all the various registers that are resident or located in the CPU. And then together with the arithmetic and logic unit performs the computation and where the intermediate results are being stored in the, another location and register before finally it is being written to a location in the random access memory and then of course finally when we want to have a permanent copy of our computation then that information needs to be moved from the random access memory to our secondary uh, memory because the random access memory as we know is volatile in nature in other words it does not retain the content uh, of the you know of its state when the power has been taken away from the memory so i would like to hold on here on this uh, very particular lecture and i hope that the information i've passed on to you has been very very uh, informative and i would like to thank you for watching
while you look forward to my subsequent video in the series of uh, the lectures for computer architecture. Thank you very much and uh, see you.